Welcome, Travis Lawrence with Arrow. Today's session is on vSAN Robo or Remote Office Branch Office. And I think this is a really great topic because we get a ton of questions uh, in the vSphere space around Robo, but more particularly when with the changes to vSAN, the Remote Office Branch Office pieces, there's some confusion around that. Uh, one of the exciting pieces of, of Robo is the ability to use a two node vSAN cluster. But with that comes some requirements around a witness virtual machine, networking, and Kevin Grote, our technical partner manager, is going to cover all that in this session, along with some of the, the product licensing uh, questions that we see a lot of. So again, this is for you. If you have customers that really need have sites that have 25 or less uh, virtual machines, then vSAN Robo is really in that sweet spot. And that's probably the number one question I've really seen is when, when vSAN came out, there was a lot of customer adoptions, a lot of excitement, but some of the SMB and, and even larger customers with remote office sites were really interested in this technology, but they just couldn't leverage it because they didn't want to put that third physical host at a site. So now if we have a central location, Kevin will go over how we can leverage two physical hosts at one site, a witness VM at a central site, and what the requirements really are around that. So as always, please check us out at, at Arrow VMware on Twitter and be on the lookout for other Aero VMware videos that we'll post in the future. With that, I will pass it on to Kevin. Hello, and welcome to today's session. As always, I'm your host, Kevin Grote, Technical Partner Manager here at VMware. Today, we're going to be talking about Virtual SAN 6.1, specifically around Robo, or remote or branch office. Seems to be a lot of confusion around the ideas with Robo and Virtual SAN, and now that we have all these concepts of stretch clusters, I thought it was a pretty good idea for us to dispel some of the confusion, make sure that everybody's on the same page, as we start to leverage these technologies in cool new ways across multiple data centers. And yes, those data centers sometimes include our remote or branch offices. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing to realize when we're talking about remote or branch office, and I really can't underline this enough, is that this is a use case meant for robo type of workloads. So if you remember, a robo workload is limited to 25 virtual machines per remote or branch office. And so a lot of the information that you see here is going to be targeted directly at that. A lot of the information on the next slide about sizing is going to be talking specifically about what we have for these remote or branch office common types of implementations. But start at the beginning. We have here inside of this example, three remote or branch offices. So let's just call them three remote data centers. And inside of those three remote data centers, we're leveraging vSphere Robo and we're leveraging vSAN for Robo. And with that, we want to ensure that we can monitor them effectively. So here's how it works. You can see that you've got inside of this example where you have remote or branch office solution diagrams for Robo. You're going to have one witness per virtual SAN cluster. We remember that that witness VM is going to be deployed and used for quorum as well as a voting mechanism in the case of a failure. And that witness can be deployed either inside of a third site, secondary site, which in this case is going to be the centralized data center, or it could be deployed inside of vCloud Air. That witness, as you recall, is just an ESXi uh, appliance. And that witness is only there to store metadata, not anything that actually has to do with the VMs. This will allow all of the sites to be managed centrally by one vCenter. So all of the patching and upgrades are going to be performed directly through that centralized vCenter. And it's a one-to-one -one relationship, which means if there are, you know, five robos, then there will be five witness VMs. If there are three robos, there will be three witness VMs. So this gives you a kind of a little bit of a clearer picture as to what we're doing with the witness VM. Additionally, 
We also offer support now for two node clusters for Robo. And in this diagram, we're seeing that inside of each of the individual sites. So no longer with Robo do you have to have three virtual SAN hosts to create a virtual SAN inside of your remote site. You can do it now with just two hosts. So within that space, we're using the Witness VM to help us provide that quorum and serve as that vote, voting mechanism so we no longer need to have minimum of three hosts inside of each space. This also aligns much more closely with the types of workload size deployments, anywhere from five to 10 to a maximum of 25 virtual machines inside of those robo instances. So talking about sizing, let's look closer into that topic. So here we can see that we have a two node robo solution overviewed the same way we had before. Communication between Robo and the witness is going to be done with unicast. You're not going to need multicast inside of this space. And here you see some uh, requirements for the round trip time over the network. The resource requirements, if we were to assume somewhere around five to 10 virtual machines inside of each remote or branch office, you're going to need about 15 gigs of capacity and about 10 gigs for, uh, you know, the caching tier. So that would be, you know, thin provisioning. Uh, you could utilize that as well to save cost. You're going to need two virtual CPUs and eight gigs of memory. So you can see inside of those robo spots, you're really not going to need a lot of hardware. Plus the fact that you only need two hosts means it's all the more efficient. So what's changed inside of PPNL or product packaging and licensing with Robo? Let's take a closer look. You can see that you have Virtual SAN Standard and Virtual SAN Advanced. And let's just zoom in on that for one second before we get into Robo. The key difference between Standard and Advanced is the availability for a stretched cluster. If you're not familiar with the concept of stretched clustering, please check out this video. However, the new changes, the green dots between standard and advanced are the integration with the vRealize operations management pack to provide a global view and to provide integrations, forecasting and predictability for vSAN and also the vSphere replication five minute RPO integration. We remember that is available exclusively with virtual SAN and vSphere replication. But now if we look at Robo, we see here that we're no longer going to be doing stretched clustering. So virtual SAN for Robo, again, it's 25 virtual machines per pack, maximum one pack per site. So you're going to have a maximum of 25 remote or branch office virtual machines existing per site, a minimum of two nodes for that virtual SAN Robo cluster. And you're not going to be looking at doing stretched clustering inside of this space simply because you've got a one-to-one -one mapping of witness appliances from the centralized location out to those remote or branch offices. So each one of them is really kind of an island unto itself, hence remote or branch office. There's a lot of great ways to get started understanding more about virtual SAN, including hands-on labs, product walkthroughs, detailed videos, not to mention some of the other content that's here inside of this playlist. Be sure to reach out to your local VMware SE team if you have any questions. And as always, thank you very much for taking the time today. Hopefully you found value in this session and I look forward to talking to you again really soon.